So what's your name? Emma. Emma, I'm Rowan. Sorry. What's yours? Rowan. Rowan, nice. Oh, this looks so nice. Yes. I'm, I'm going to have to have another one, I'd imagine. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sorry, it's been a long morning. Where are you from? You have an accent that's not from here. I, I do have an accent. I'm uh, from Croatia. Okay, cool. That's why Katarina and me, we can speak. Yeah. Because she's from Serbia. Yeah. Like her parents are. And she's I'm from Croatia and we're really, really close to each other. Yeah, of course. So yeah, that's how... Is it the same language or... Uh, it's similar? kind of the same language. We have some words different. But there's a good common ground there. Yeah. Yeah. And are you here to study? Yeah, yeah, I'm here on my second year now. And what are you, an artist as well? Well, uh, I'm an animator. An animator? Okay, yeah. cool. That's okay. What kind of animation do you want to do? I feel like I'm on an interview. Yeah, it feels like <laughs> I'm interviewing. I'm going to stop this in a minute, but I don't know what to do. No, 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 keep going, keep going. This is much easier. Um, what I like... Well, what I do is 2D mostly, yeah. like hand okay. drawn, flash, and Photoshop, and Illustrator, is and like After Effects. Is that like cartoons and, and stuff? Or yeah, yeah. Nothing. yeah. That's what I like to do. And, but, and my course, there are people that go more into a commercial kind of 3D yeah. style, and then there's like this kind of artistic <laughs> people that want to do like cartoons and film yeah, yeah. for festivals and whatnot. I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay, so you want to make some money yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Just, yeah. What about you? I'm a musician. Oh, I, yeah, if nice. I had to say, yeah. I, w I do other things, but I'm a, I'm a musician is where my, my heart is, going. I guess. Yeah, I, I, I run a pub, but I'm less inclined to talk about that because that's just something I fell into doing. Um, yeah. Like running a pub? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, where? Yeah. In a place called Carl Shorten. It's sort of near Croydon ish. Yeah. It's that sort of side of London. Mm. So it's a, bit, it's a little bit further out. But yeah, it's, yeah, I never planned to do that. I just do that. So you are doing it at the moment? Yeah, I've been doing it for um, about five years. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird actually. I never, like, I never changed. I always said as a kid that I would never want to, well, not as a kid, but when I was growing up, I wouldn't want to work in a pub. And then now I did, and then I stayed there for ages, and then I learned how to make it work, and now I do that. What's yeah. the name of it? The Hope. The Hope? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's a nice pub, actually. I'm very blessed. We've done very well. It's um, an unusual operation to be involved with, because it was um, a pub like most others that was going to get closed down, and the, uh, the community bought it, basically. Yeah, they were, it took about two years and they got together, they formed a company, got a load of money together from about 45 people and invested into it and created a business to basically operate it and it's been a massive learning experience for us all because none of us really did it beforehand, we just sort of worked it out, so it's been quite, yeah, it's been quite interesting. How long was it, like, how long was it going? It's always been there and it... It, I, I've been there six years, and after about the first two, it was going to get just like pubs do, just get sold. And it was we found out they were going to turn it into a, a restaurant. It was going to be a public one, and that's when they decided to kind of get together and, and buy it. Uh, yeah, so it's been a nice thing to be involved with, on that sense. But um, yeah. What about that music part? Music's far more interesting. Yeah, I mean, I. I yeah, I don't know what to say really about music. That's what I spend most of my free time doing and playing a couple of bands and doing a bit of work. Say again, sir? What do you play? I'm a bassist mainly. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, no, I'm quite, I'm actually busier now than I've been for a long time. So things, things are going cool. That's how I met uh, Katarina actually. She just yeah. turned up at a gig yeah. that I did by coincidence a long time ago now, about six months ago or maybe longer. And yeah, stayed in touch. Really? Yeah, Katarina is everywhere. <laughs> She's like a proper workaholic. Yeah. And she knows a lot of people and whatnot. Doing a lot of different projects. So when she came to me, I was like, yeah, I'll do whatever. <laughs> so, 
since then. So what are you up to in your life? So you're just studying to be two years now to be a... Uh, yeah, I have one more year to go and then masters, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do masters at the, like, now. Maybe when I earn some money. Are you going to stay here? You can stay here, what do you think? You know what, I'm thinking about it these days, like what I'm going to do afterwards, because going back to Croatia, it can be good or it can be really bad, it depends on like what I can find there mm. when it comes to job and, and I think I will be able to find something good. In your something field. Paying. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 in my field. And even if I find something which is well paid, it might not be what I want to do, it might be like... Not commercial, but you know, like when you have news and then the mm. thing at the beginning spins around, like that kind of stuff. Mm. Like they ask for that thing, but I don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, basically stuff for TV. So, I'm going to try to stay here, see if I can get a job. I think that's the plan. How old are you? Do you remember asking? Hmm? How old are you? 20. 20? Wow, well, man. Two zero. That's crazy. I've got a lot of respect for someone like you that can come leave your home so young to be in another country. I can't imagine, you know, I must be fighting. Could you speak English when you came? Like, I know that most people around Europe get to learn English better than we learn other languages here. Well, that might be true. We're pretty notorious at not really trying very yeah, You don't have to try because, you know, you know well, everyone else is trying. That's what's <laughs> happened, yeah. It's, I, feel, I feel like that's really unfair, but... It's always go. good to know more languages than one, but if you are English, you're really lucky. Yeah, it would appear so, mm. especially if you're traveling around the world. You seem to usually get away with not being yeah. able to speak much else. Mm, I did. I had English in school. My professor was um, mentally ill, so yeah, okay. it was a bit hard to... What, really mentally ill? Or? Yeah, yeah, like schizophrenia and paranoia. Really? And he was, a <laughs> and he was a teacher? Yeah, yeah, and wow. no one could have fired her because, just because she was, she was ill. Right. But no one could have forced her to go to like, uh, heal herself or whatever. Funny. So yeah, I had like four years of suffering. <laughs> but like for her it was like, oh, just read me this part and if you read it correctly or at least it sounds correctly, yeah, here's the name, just go on. No one really knew English with her. Yeah, yeah. But I had a little bit of knowledge before that and then I came here and I'm I guess building it up. increase once you get here, don't they? Yeah, yeah. when I just came, first came here, it was like, oh, are you from Russia? Your English is very... Russian, I'm like, nope. I guess it's just the pronunciation has some similarities in it when you speak English, I guess. But then that might be based on stereotypes and not based on actual knowing Russian yeah. people. And yeah. Yeah, I think they kind of think that all the same. Like, some people ask me when they first met me, like, oh, you're from Croatia, do you drink vodka and stuff like that? I'm like, nope, that's also Russian and Polish, not Croatian. But you know, you can't blame people for What's that. unusual about Croatians then? Or not unusual, but what's, um, oh dear. What's, uh, what's their like kind of um, thing? What? Do they have like a, 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 a national dish, national oh, drink? Oh, you think like stereotypes kind yeah. of Croatian. Um, what we have? We have rakia. Okay. Rakia. Never heard of it. Well, it's similar to Greek raki. Right. It's kind of like they call it schnapps or, yeah, okay, or yeah, spirit yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Like that. It's a really strong alcoholic drink. And what we do is we make rakia from everything. It's from honey. It's from wine. It's from oh, uh, I mean wine, <laughs> grapes, from right. plums, from everything. So it's just a fermented. Yeah. Yeah. It's really really strong alcoholic drink. And it's really good. Also, yeah. You need strength when it's cold, I guess. Mm. I assume Croatia is cold. Is that a uh, or is that a gen uh, well, it's not that cold. Like when it comes to summer, let's say it's like top is forty, and when it comes to winter, it's kind of like minus twenty, minus twenty. Like that's the coldest. So it's not like Russian cold. No, it's quite as crazy. Yes, it's but it's a bit, yeah, it's cold. Snow. So, um, what did you want to talk about? Do you have any ideas? 
like now, mm -hmm. did I prepare myself? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my notebook is uh, no. I did not. Did you think about it? No, no. I wasn't really. I was kind of um. I was thinking like, but then again, like, oh, let's just go with the flow. What happens? This is happen? true. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that he would like to talk, so I don't have to. <laughs> Oh man, the thing is, I don't know what to talk about. I don't mind talking. What's important to you? Um, but what, what's important to you? Like, what's your favorite color? Um, what's important to me is at this point, studies like yeah. a lot. I can go like to show you, you know, my family is important, which is normal, of course. Like, yeah, I kind of go. You know, it just goes. It's expected, so if we it? like put that aside, yeah. family and friends and all that things. I think at this point, like study is a lot. Why? Because I spend a lot of effort on persuading uh, my family to come here. Yeah. Like I, I fought for it. Like I was. I I spent a lot of time just to be able to come here in, back in Croatia to come here yeah. to study what I stu what I'm studying. So now that I am studying it, now it's really important to be good at it, yeah. to finish it, and to find a proper job. And how's it going? On the exception of the job, how are you doing well? Like, do you think you're on top of everything? If I have to compare myself to other people, which you shouldn't uni, do, no. I don't. Yeah, I, I was like, are you talking about that? Because I don't want to. Do that. No, I just meant. Do you feel like that you, you you're gonna finish it without? Is it gonna be? I mean, is it, I don't oh, want to say is it easy, but I mean, how? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll be able to finish it. It's not that easy, but it's not that hard. Some people are taking it really hard to keep up with what we have to do because mm. what we have to do. Is animate and animation really takes time. Uh, yeah. You take you have no idea how much time it takes just to make something which lasts so seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how so many frames is it in then one second? Uh, twenty-five yeah. per second. For one second. Yeah. Well, there's like things you can do twelve per second, and mm. it depends on what you do. But if you do hand a drawn frame by frame, it's basically twenty-five frames per second. So that's a lot of frames for seconds, and um, yeah, it's it's hard. But since you love it, yeah. you kind of you know, don't find it that hard to do. It. You actually enjoy suffering, <laughs> and it's great because at the end you see something which is wasn't moving. Now it's moving, now it's alive, now it looks great. Yeah, that must be quite rewarding to like breathe mm. life into something like that. Okay, so that's, that's on. So here, this is something I, I'd like to ask you, I'd like to ask all human beings this, and it's what I've already asked you. So, it's what's being, important to me? Yeah, well, no, it's connected to that. So, what's important to you? Obviously, we can assume that you love your family and friends. That's normal, mm. and obviously your studies are important because, as you said, it was uh, an effort to, to get here in the first place. It's a mm. privilege to be here. Um, but from a day-to-day -day point of view, what else is important? Because um, there must be things. Toothbrush. That... Yeah, I'm. <laughs> Showering, hot water in cold days, humor. Humor is good. Humor is really good. It's really helpful. But do you, do you think that, that, that um, what do you think the point is of everything? Of humor? Of, oh. <laughs> of everything. Of life? Yeah. We live, we die. Yeah? Is that what it is for you? That's cool. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really think about it. It's more of like, um, you just, you know, you wake up in the morning, you seize the day, you go to bed, and every day until you die. Kind of. <laughs> and then you put all those things that are important in your life, in your daily life, and then Yeah, then this you is die. true. This is fair enough. And you never know, maybe That's the bleak, death is it? not the final thing, you know. You don't know. You know, you don't, I guess. We don't know. No. So, you know. No, it's good. I don't, I don't know. That bothers me a little bit though. Not Why? your response, just generally. <laughs> no, not you personally, it just bothers me as, as a human. 
Why? Just to think that, that, that um, there's no point to anything other than just to get some sense of enjoyment out of, out of life. I feel like there might be something more. Something to be done. Maybe not necessarily any more, but something to do. I mean, it, it, it doesn't need to be any more. Everything's here, you know, it's amazing. There's a lot, of, a lot. Of, a lot in the world, but I just feel like there must be something to be doing. Like, especially when you look at some people who are really into their routines. Not that, but just really messed up, you know, really unhappy all the time. Mm. Uh, that bothers me. Mental health is something I find quite interesting. I've, I've seen. Um... Do you have good mental health? <laughs> I don't know, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to, um, how do you say, psychiatry, no, yeah, psychological yeah. Um, testing thing. You, really? What, here or uh, uh, back home? Back or, home. And what was that for? Uh, I don't really know. I think my mom was like, I think you should go. <laughs> and how did that work? What, what, what and I was like, involve? I'll go. Uh, I think she was worried. I don't know why. Do you, oh, I do know, you not why. know why. Do you... I do know why. why. I probably do know why because I was. Uh, <laughs> wow, how did that conversation go? Um, I was studying. Well, I was. I finished my high school, and at that point, I was. I was done. Like I, I said, I don't want to go to the to normal fine art academy in Croatia, and I said I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. And then that was like a kind of depressed area for me, so I didn't like talk to people much. She felt depressed. She thought I was depressed, uh, okay. and I probably was a but little she bit. She thought that you made more than you. Yeah, actually. she thought I'm gonna kill myself or some shit. I don't know. I know, no, 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 no okay. not that bad. But she was like, um, she didn't know what to do with me, so she was like, oh, do you want some help? Like, no. <laughs> well, what do you think about going to some people to talk to with? And I was like, no. She well, anyway, quite modern. Yeah, that's yeah. Quite, uh, that's quite I, th a, I uh, thought it was like a little bit American kind of like go to the therapist and talk yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, mom, I do have friends, you know. <laughs> like, I can talk to my friends. Like, but maybe you need like someone who knows about them. So I did some tests and whatnot, and, and she was like, "You're fine." All oh, right, so they, they were just—it was very. Just yeah, basic. I had like one hour of nice chat with a lady, and she's like, "Oh, you're you're absolutely fine. Just go home. Don't call <laughs> us anymore." I'm like, "Thanks." <laughs> so it was just like the the time when I was like not knowing what I'm gonna do with my life. I wanted to come here. I was just a little bit afraid to like say that out loud, yeah, make it real. Yeah. So well, maybe it's such a big change, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is a change. From one country for another. Yeah. Starting a it's whole a new life. It's scary. Okay, yeah, I, I've, I, I said like I've met so many people that have done it and just think it's amazing. I just can't even imagine it. And how's your mental health? Um, since you already have yeah, it's better these days than it has been in the past. Like I um, I have a few issues with anxiety at times but that's getting few and far between now compared to when I was a bit younger. Um, what yeah. makes you anxious? Uh, no, it's it's sort of just a, it's usually um, it's not specific things per se. Just some days, the same task can make me feel anxious, and some days it won't. But on a bad day, the anxiety can be quite. Um, you know, when you're nervous about something, you have like that feeling in your stomach, like that kind of thing. That would just be there, constant, oh. like niggling, and there. Oh, uh, no, working through things will take it away because it's just just there. But sometimes it can linger for a few days, and sometimes I might not feel it. But nowadays, sometimes it can be months and months and months between having any problem. No, it's mm, better. Okay, yeah, okay, no, okay, it was okay. more when I was uh, a little younger. But, how old? I mean, how um, young? pretty much from um, about twelve till um, about twenty. 22, 23. I would blame it on puberty, but it seems like a little bit. I think, I think it, it would be easy to blame it on puberty, but mm. I don't think it was just that because I think it. it, it, it I think I think by by my twenties, puberty had finished. I hope anyway. Yeah. Well, but I was taking a lot of drugs at the time, and I think <laughs> that was exacerbating um, that. That might not that help might your even, anxiety. Yeah, that 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 definitely made it a lot worse. Want a cake? 
No, I'm okay, thank you. I'm okay. But yeah, no, I mean, my mental health is fine. I just think it's an interesting subject. I guess I know a lot of people that are. It's amazing. They've got great health in their head. Yeah, I, I have a friend. He was. He's a sound student. And he has, he has issues. And now he's not a sound student anymore. He took a year off. Yeah. Yeah, schizophrenia and and, and, and how did that, that help him? Did he take a year off, or did that make him work? I don't know. I think he he did that so he doesn't fuck up his studies. Yeah, take maybe take a break to uh, get himself better. Yeah, so because he he's then... taking like some kind of medications and whatnot. Yeah, I've never taken um, any legal medications. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was offered it a few times over the years, but I um, always managed to stay away from it. Did you talk to anyone? Yeah, I, I, I only once actually I was sent somewhere by a, a doctor when I was about um, 17. Mm. Uh, I found uh, to be quite patronising. Um, so I only saw it once and then um, I felt like she was talking to me like I was four or five years old. A really big fake smile on her face. Yeah, they do have to, I think. Yeah, they do. Because then mean, you never know who you're talking to. I think to. they have to talk to quite neutrally mm -hmm. and, you know, and it comes across badly, so I just wasn't in the time. I, I basically fixed myself. I can't remember how, but it, was, it all got better. Yeah. That's good to know. I just. I think it, I, it sounds like you have you're, you're fairly carefree, you, in a good way, like not a bad way. Not like you just, if you're, what's important to you is just maintaining carefree. and doing your studies. It's good. In a way, like I don't care about people. Are you worried about anything? Hmm. You're like, do you worry about? I suppose everyone worries about money. Is money difficult for you? Well, at this point, I can't really complain because I'm studying. Yeah, so you're looked so, after. So you know, that's kind of. I'm sad that I think about it too often, and of course, being a Croatian in London is basically not having money ever. <laughs> what is? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. What, what's the money in Croatia? It's not euro, is it? Kuna. Right. Okay. But, but so it's quite expensive then, presumably. Yeah. It, one uh, no one pound is ten kuna. Right. Okay. So that's almost like. So yeah, it's kind of expensive. So how much would... Everything um, is double here, like um, from water, if here is like one pound, in place is 50 piece. Why, okay. Bread, anything, alcohol, oh, alcohol is like three times more expensive. Yeah, here. a lot of places in Europe have some very different alcohol regulations, don't mm. they? I went to Sweden not long ago, Ooh, it's quite nice. opposite, but that was like... It was. It made England look really cheap. Mm. Yeah, Norway, Sweden. Yeah, I mean, I went to Denmark as well a few years ago, and it's the same story of Scandinavian places where they kept their own currency. It's just everything's like something is three times more expensive. You know, like four or five pounds for a coffee, seven or eight, nine pounds for a beer. You know. That's so expensive. Yeah, but for them, it's fine because they get paid, you know, twice yeah, as much. Yeah. So well, it's here it's kind of, it's kind of the same, same sort of thing. Yeah, and in Croatia again. Does your student money come from England then, or from Croatia? From Croatia. Right, but it obviously it, it, it's, a, it, it's enough to survive here. Yeah, yeah. One day I'll have to pay that off. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. But, yeah. So that's why I'm not like actually thinking about it right now because I know I'm gonna have a lot of time in my life to think about it. So that's true. For yeah. now, I'm just kind of like having it in mind. And if you're 20, you shouldn't worry about money just yet. Yeah, just I think like it yeah. might be selfish, but I think like yeah, I shouldn't be thinking about it right now. Maybe but like two years. When I was 20, I wasn't really thinking about it. Mm. I still don't think about money that much. Mm. Yeah. Oh, baby. Are you going to have babies? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Do you think about having children? I don't. I actually don't think about having kids. My mom was 
having kids when she was a bit younger than me. So, wow. Nice. So it's kind of like one year old. Uh, but I don't. It's strange. My life sounds like really monotone. Is it monotone right now? Like, oh, I'm just thinking about my studies and what else studies and friends and studies. I, I do like to go out and I drink. I think that's okay. very normal. You like to what? Sorry. I do like to go out, mingle, and drink. Yeah. That's like, you I'm, know, I'm not just one of those people that stay in their room. Yeah, for like no, no, that's three, fair six, enough. Five days a year. I, I don't go out that much, but I go out all the time, if that makes sense. I don't get to go out for myself very much, but I'm yeah. always out to do something, mm. if that makes sense, especially with music and stuff. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's You're cool. kind of forced, it's, in a way. It, it's basically, I, I, my, I have no time for socialising, but being a musician and working in, um, in a pub is extremely social. So it gets yeah. forced upon me. So by the time I have some time off, I don't have any energy left to talk to other people. <laughs> I think that after being so so much among people, I would probably like stick to my room afterwards, yeah. not go out <laughs> to have me time, meditate, do whatever. Yeah. Do you meditate? Is that something you do? Have interest? I don't meditate in a way. I'm just gonna. You know, yeah, yeah. But I do like to spend some me time. Nothing like not doing anything. With no basically. music as well. Like nothing. Concentrating, thinking. Just having like, I I think like having ten minutes per day, even before you go to bed or whatever, just thinking about things, processing everything is fine. Yeah, I think that's really important. Actually, just it's amazing to to what you can miss when you just. There's a lot of distraction around you yeah. about situations that happen. And it happens so often, which is maybe embarrassing, but when I think about today, I go through it in my head and I'm like, wow, that was embarrassing. I might, maybe I should like not think about it, but then I do think about it. I talk to myself, and I'm like, oh, it's fine. It happens yeah, yeah, to yeah. people, you know? Like, you're okay, and then I go to bed. You find when you're trying to go to sleep that, that a lot of that stuff comes through your head and you fall yeah. asleep really quick. It happens, yeah, before bed. Yeah, I find that I, I struggle to sleep and I find that the last sort of 20 minutes before I do fall asleep mm. and then is like a is really gone. strange uh, bubble that seems to last for ages where if something wakes me up a little bit, like anything, I just think, I can't remember what I was thinking about, but it was intense, like intense. It was almost like my thought processes are disconnected from me. <laughs> They're just like happening. And as soon as I get distracted, I can't grab Go hold of them. Yeah. yeah. But recently, I've had some very um, interesting processes <laughs> like that. But I find it really difficult to, um, to keep to remember, it's like remembering dreams, you know? As soon as you wake up, it's there, and then as soon as you have a single thought, half the dream is gone, and then as soon as you move yeah. even more, yeah. and it's like that. And I'm, at the moment, it's really bothering me that my most yeah. profound, useful thoughts, I can't remember. Yeah. It's annoying, I feel like, I feel, but I feel like even though I don't remember them, in, they must be in my subconscious yeah, now. They are. You know, like, because they are, it's like problem solving, and then you get the answer. And it's almost like it's given to you, and then you can't remember it. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's annoying. It's kind of like zoning out. There was um, a guy, I can't remember who, who he was now, a famous inventor. It might have been like someone like Thomas Edison or someone like that. He used to do this thing where he used to sit on a chair. And he'd start hold uh, uh, a metal, some metal ball bearings, and um, basically let himself fall asleep in his chair. Mm. And basically, when he'd fall asleep, mm. he'd drop the ball bearing, and then that would, then he'd try and stay in that kind of state of being half awake and half asleep. Mm. Uh, they actually call it a um, hypnagogic stage, which is like a certain type of like your brain is more susceptible to, to certain things. It's almost like you're in a trance type thing so but like but trying to control it yourself and actually like bring back some subconscious information that's interesting to me i like that do you know what else i like to talk about with people um, especially people i don't know what do you dream much do you remember your dreams 
I think we dream every day. It's we just do, we, we do. We, we don't just wait remember. remember. But some yeah. people definitely have uh, a better uh, recall. Um, yeah, in fact, you, you, you have to dream every day. When I dream, when I remember the dream the best is when I dream for short amounts of time. Yeah, like, like if it's like early in the morning, like somebody woken up already, or um, yeah, when I woke up in the morning and then I have like ten more minutes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I fall asleep, and then in those ten minutes I have like hours of dreaming, basically, mm. like what happens, I don't know, and then. Um, most of the time I don't remember, I just forget. Do you ever get lucid in the dreams that you do remember? Do you know what that means? Yeah, I I don't think I, I was ever. No, I that's something I used to do as a child, but I've been trying, and I, 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 well, I've been trying, I haven't tried hard enough. So. Sometimes I feel pain, like, in my dream. Oh, like, wow, really? Oh, I, I feel pain, like, maybe I sleep wrong, and then I feel pain, and then in my dream, yeah, I feel manifest. like an attack or something. That's really strange when that's that That's so bad when you yeah. happens. I wake up in the morning, in, like, hearing yeah, that, I'm, already? like, freaking out, like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. It's really strange. Oh, no, yeah, no worries. I dream cats kill me. <laughs> Second, sorry? Cats killing me. I was just thinking about cats. <laughs> Did you like cats then? Or obviously not. If they dream about them. No, I do like cats. I yeah. like do you have a cat? No, I'm more of a dog. Oh, okay. I've got a cat. Really? Yeah. What kind of? Well, she's a black and white cat. Aww. She adopted us. She, uh, she turned up about a year and a half ago. Mm. And we were like, we shouldn't feed her because then she'll stay and she's not our cat. But she kept coming back. Uh-huh. And um, so we, we, we went to see, took her to the vet. You know, these animals get microchipped. Yeah. So you can find out mm. she didn't have a chip. Mm. And we put posters for months, you know, found this cat. No one claimed her. So she, she moved in and she's been... Um, She's been here ever since. I never felt like I had a pet before. My parents had dogs, um, my grandparents, but I never felt like I had a pet. I was never really close to them. And I didn't like this cat. But now uh, Maybe it was a sweet cat. Maybe. My theory, I reckon she was an old person's cat who maybe oh, yeah. Doesn't maybe care died. About it. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that she, she left somewhere where they obviously didn't look for her afterwards. And she, and she didn't look, in a, she, when she came, she wasn't in a bad way. She was quite young. Because they bet only think she's about five or six now. So she was a lot smaller when we first got her. Not like underfed, but just mm, like, just small. Uh, just like only just finished being a kitten type of thing. Mm. She's an extremely cat. friendly cat. And she want to make something really strange. There's, um, there's this book we've got at a pub, which is uh, was produced in I think the fifties, and it's basically illustrations of uh, pubs in the area. Nice. Uh, yeah, really cool, really odd. It might even be older than the fifties. It might be like closer to like the turn of the century type thing. And all the pubs look really, really different, but you can see certain things about them. Obviously, those buildings don't tend to change. And our pubs in this book, and it's just really weird because next to the pub is this little black and white cat. And it's just something that's really strange. There's a little black and white cat in this picture that's like 50 Maybe it's years old. Yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know if it works like that, but I just thought it was a bit of a spooky uh, yeah. thing to see. You know what? When you were saying about the um, mental health and that, <clears throat> I remember I wanted to mention I've seen a documentary called The Devil and Daniel Johnston. Devil and Daniel Johnston. You've never heard of this? It sounds good. You should watch it. Yeah? I think you might like it. Okay. Because I did. I liked it. I, I watched it too. Did you say it was Sorry. a documentary or film? A uh, documentary. It's about Daniel Johnston. I don't know Daniel Johnston. He's a really weird dude like um i think he's around 60 now, or 50 50 or 60 year old guy and um i don't want to say much because i want you to like go right, so into de- like to watch the all right i'll tell you what i do I'll, I'll um i'll put it in my phone I yeah. it's not on netflix is it i don't know it's i don't think so. well it's um it's an award-winning documentary. I'll and type it in. Like the Devil and Daniel ago. Johnson. Did you Johnston, say? Yeah. Johnston. Uh-huh. 
So I'll tell you what we can talk about. Is it, oh sorry? I was just, no, no, connected to, so I, I love films. Mm. And I'm just wondering if you like, most people like films. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I do like films. I just, I'm not one of those people that I know a lot about them. Do you like films from your own country? What's Croatian films like? Not very good. Because I've been getting into, I, 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 I've we recently have been watching a lot of foreign films. Mm. Uh, but I've not seen anything from Croatia. Well, there's one, there's one film that I like. It's I think from two years ago, and it's not just Croatian. It's Serbian, Bosnian, um, and Croatian. Mm. Well, at least actors are. It's a mix. Yeah, I think it's more Serbian than, than Croatian, but it has altogether. Uh, it's called Parada, which is parade. Right. And like. All of our movies that we have, even if they're comedies, they have some tragedy in it. Because not that long ago we had a war with mm. Serbia. And Serbia and Bosnia had war with each other and blah 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 blah. So whenever there's a movie there's also this kind of thing that has to be there, some kind of tragedy or mm. something like really black black comedy style. I find we a lot of films that come out that are from the UK and America seem to explore tragedy. A lot of the French films I've seen and Spanish films I've seen, tragedy seems to be quite up there in terms of exploring. Maybe that's just because I pick my <laughs> films. French movies are like good. I mean, comedy. Really, so I haven't. I've only watched one. French comedy, but I've watched a lot of French films in the last couple of weeks. And the one thing I will say is they really like sex in their films. Sex? Yeah, in their films. Quite graphic depictions of sex. I watched a French really, people. I watched a really good film called um, The Sexual Chronicles of a French Family. Sexual Chronicles of a French Family, yeah. And mm. what it was, it was about this sex. I wonder why there's sex in it. Well, it, it was it was actually really really good, and it was kind of a comedy because it was basically about um, this family. There was um, a granddad, a mum and dad, uh, two brothers, and a, um, a daughter. And basically, um, the boy <coughs> got suspended from school for for partaking in a sexual act at school, and uh, that kind of sets the mum worrying about her family because they set this thing up where they're quite a close family but the one thing that they never really talk about is sex uh. and then basically again decides to explore the, pri the private details of all, all of their sex lives and even though from the, boy the young boys are parents that they're all quite not willing to talk about it they've all got quite an adventurous side to them and it's really interesting because she's the mother starts talking to people because she's worried that she's failed her kids uh, about and not taught them well enough for having a sexual relationship, which is quite opposite. Mm. The son is one of the sons is bisexual, mm. and the other girls having um, a relationship with their boyfriend. But then the most interesting part was his granddad, because she was most worried about him because his wife had died like a few years ago, and she, she actually says to him, you know, like, what do you do? What do you do for sex? You know, do you feel bad? Like, I, you know, I hate to ask, but you know, at your age, how does that work? And then he talks about how he has a relationship with this prostitute that he's been with for a long time, and how even though it's it's a prostitute, it's the same person each time, and that in itself has become almost like a relationship. A relationship. And then he actually like, passing away or whatever, and then it's kind of like okay so it's called the sexual chronicles of the French of family, French family. <laughs> it's um it's not the best French film I've seen <laughs> but it did make there were some very funny bits in it it's it's a question how if all the sex was required in the film to actually show to the level it was but it was all filmed in such a way that kind of made you feel kind of uncomfortable. Like, you shouldn't have been there. So it wasn't filmed in a kind of a way that was trying to um, arouse you, per se. It was there to kind of make you feel like you're sort of, yeah, you're stuck in this situation. It's all awkward. It's very, like, you know, and that's quite, quite, quite enjoyed that. I like the awkwardness of it, actually. 
Yeah, no, I've watched, I, I, I watched a great French film, um, which I really recommend, which is absolutely like, beautiful, which is called uh, The House of Tolerance, which is set in the, um, the beginning of the, uh, the 20th century. And it's basically, it's basically about a brothel in France, but like right at the days when brothels were basically being closed down, at a point where brothels were still illegal. And it's weird, the film isn't really about, it's definitely not about men, it's about these, these girls and it's almost like, um, it's almost like theatre because obviously when they're entertaining the clients, it's like the show, but it's, it's kind of like, Everyone knows roughly what would happen in this kind of place between, say, 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. So what the film's trying to do is show you what happens after 2 a.m. to 8 p.m. So like the kind of the, the kind of um, the uh, kind of how like basically it's like a theatre and it's backstage and basic how they don't particularly enjoy what they do and and they're not very free or independent and what they. It, it kind of focuses on their relationships with each with each other, and it's really nice because they very rarely film the men, even when the men are in shot. It's really like focusing on the relationships between these women, and also it makes the brothel itself into like a character. It's really, it's really, it's. I've actually watched it twice in the last like sort of ten days. I really recommend it. It's really, really nice. House of Tolerance. It's subtitles. So you've got to, it, you've got to read uh, quite a lot, but it's visually it's really beautiful. I mean, it's it's because it's it's very authentically done, but it's almost like watching a painting that's moving. You know, like they, the director's really gone. There's a lot of interesting techniques. It is really romantic. It's just like down to the fact that the, 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 the costumes are amazing, the set design is amazing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking to ask you what about costumes. Costumes are, are fantastic. Because how you're talking about it, it seems it's, like they have like a bit of it's, What's really nice about the costumes is we have a really strong sense of um, how a lady would have dressed in 1900. But we're not dealing with like the elite necessarily, we're dealing with these brothels who don't, they're not poor because they live in a brothel where they looked after and they don't have a lot of money and you see them wear kind of like, because of the, how much even in France like on the outer side there's in the past a little bit of like repression for like, uh, especially for females particularly at that time, you kind of see them dressing and behaving in a way that you would only ever see behind closed doors so therefore we don't have like, a very good um, understanding of that historically. Does it, am I making sense or am I getting too like convoluted? Like, you have a very stereotypical image of how both men and women would dress at that time but what you're seeing is you're seeing that kind of person behind closed doors in a much more relaxed setting and it's, that's quite interesting. Um, it must have been really hard to research, I think, because like I said, uh, I, I think it would be easy to, from the accounts, to find out what it was like in a brothel in 1900, but to find out what the days and the lives of the people that lived there were the rest of the time, probably didn't really get written about. Some of it's quite difficult to watch, there's a lot of kind of, you know, like, um, a lot of stuff, because it, yeah, a lot of stuff that people like old diseases and stuff that's quite sad and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, I really recommend it. It's yeah, it's very good. Water doesn't sound nice. Yeah, no, it's good. Chronicles. Chronicle, well, Chronicles is a bit. <laughs> I think I, I have to admit. Don't I, watch it with your family, kind of. Thing. No, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, it depends. With it's, it's like I mean, this is a subject that I've been finding interesting a lot. It's about censorship. So you, you, you're an animator, so you're a creative person. Like, here's a question that I've asked a few people recently. Do you think it's okay for an artist to explore anything? Hmm. Okay, or should I be more specific? Is it okay for an artist um, who's not necessarily, let's not judge the individuals as a person, just as, as a theoretical, as, is, an, is it okay for an artist to explore themes that no one wants to necessarily explore, so like like murder, uh, violence, rape, um, stuff like that. How far Can should an artist be allowed to explore that stuff before it's been not allowed? What is 
exploring. If you ask, if you're asking me if it's okay for an artist to go and rape someone, no, of course no, not. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm talking about is I'm talking about with consensual, consenting adults. So like all the people involved in in an artistic project know what they're involved in and are totally fine with it and giving their permission. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about rape specifically. I'm talking about anything that you would describe as being negative. Is it? Well, what point does it stop being okay for an artist, to, whether that be a writer, artist. yeah, to, to explore subjects that are hard to think? If you've got a guy uh, and you say, I've made this film or written this piece or, or, or made this thing and, and, and it offends him, that's, in my mind, that's his problem. Yeah. When can he turn around and say, what you've done is just, it's not art, it's a, I mean, I don't know, like, if you have everyone's permission to do what you plan to do, then they should be fine to do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, and if no one's being hurt, because it's, it's, it's yeah, hurt. because we're talking about like we're not talking even about even if someone is being hurt. But they and my if they're if you say yes to me, I can do whatever I want to you because you said yes, and you know what you said. Like why did you say? You know what I mean? Like mm. if I say like I'm gonna punch you in the face, is that okay it's for my art? And you say yeah, it's fine. It's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's fine. I can punch you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I ask you like, oh, do you want to be in my project? It's like yeah, and I punch you in the face. Like, then, what the? You didn't was tell that? me that. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. So, so that's so so you, so we were. Are we in an agreement then that if as long as everyone involved knows what they're involved in and has given themselves over to whatever they're doing, that, that there shouldn't be any I think subjects that should be off limits. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I think that some people are willing to give too much to artists, uh, to, to art. Because if you look at performance in Austria in, I think it was like end of 19th century, beginning of 20th, like art groups and what they did to, to their objects, which were people. What did they do? I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> So, I think it's 20th century. What they did is, um, they were really hurting. It, it was like body, body art, but right. it wasn't in a way that you paint on someone's body. It's scarification. It's definitely like cutting, cutting right, and right. taking out. And, and was that blood. done with their permission? Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Because who would do that live in front of audience and... Some people are into some very strange things yeah, so in that's, terms that's, of pain and whatnot. And that's, so that's, that's a bit strange, like how, how willing is someone you know, to go, to go to, I don't know, your question is like... I just, I, I had a, a very uh, strong conversation with someone who just told me that there are certain things that should just be not brought, not have light shined on but he was very very Christian and I couldn't help but think that his religion was affecting his ability to appreciate um, yeah. stuff that was difficult. I don't know. I like watching the things. It depends on what, what the artist what wants to say I think because if he's encouraging killing someone then he shouldn't be doing it. I mean he can't do it. Why? That's where, that's where it gets interesting for me. Because he's an artist. If he has a diploma, he can do whatever he wants. And some people might find it actually good, great. I'm not, I'm not saying that I agree on it. No, no, that's what I mean. You're taking the approach of basically, yeah. I'm just saying that they're, oh, yeah, you, you can, they can do whatever they want. I might not agree, but you know, yeah. no one is stopping them. I think that's the right way to be.